Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting game between Alpha Zero and Stockfish. Now, uh, we already said that we're going to cover some more uh, of the games from this match and uh, I think uh, 200 games were released. Out of those 220 are of um, extreme caliber and uh, we've already seen, I think, uh, three games that were played completely, out, no, or four games that were played completely from scratch and two games that were played uh, from a certain position from an op opening book. This is one of those games that was played uh, using a position from an opening book. Uh, I chose this one for this video as it features a Karl Khan, so it's very interesting, an advanced variation of the Karl Khan. Uh, it will be very enlightening to see how Alpha deals uh, with uh, these kinds of positions. We, we've already seen how uh, Alpha treats the French, now we're going to see how it trans the, uh, uh, treats the advanced Karl Khan. And also, uh, I would just like to uh, briefly interrupt uh, the, the game for, for a short announcement. Uh, YouTube did uh, their annual thing where they uh, forcefully unsubscribe people from channels. Uh, their al algorithm decides whether maybe they're not active enough or maybe, maybe they think they're just... Uh, um uh, don't don't want to be subscribed so they uh, unsubscribe them against their will so uh feel free to pause the video here and check if you are still subscribed to the channel uh for those of you who have done this and you are still subscribed congratulations you are definitely an excellent subscriber and youtube did not do anything to to mess with this and for those of you who were perhaps unsubscribed against your will uh you are more than welcome to to join back the team and join the rest of the excellent subscribers so that being said let's uh, return to the game we already said uh that we do have a, a nice advanced variation of the Karo console we have e4 c6 d4 d5 and e5 the advanced variation of the Karo Khan is on the board and uh this is uh, still every all the moves are from the opening book uh, we have bishop to e3 e6 uh those of you who are perhaps joining us in this uh, alpha versus stockfish match for the first time uh the openings uh, that were played here were used in the tcec 2016 the top chess engine competition uh so they wanted to see how alpha <coughs> uh, and stockfish 8 would treat these positions Knight d2, we have knight to d7, knight to g2, f3, knight to e7, bishop to e2, and queen to c7. So this is uh, everything still from the opening book. We have castles by alpha, and uh, there were a couple of uh, games in the database, uh, and there are now that uh, have reached this exact same position. And uh, there is one game where a6 was played, but uh, the move Stockfish chooses, the f6 move immediately uh, going for alpha center, uh, is uh, the first of its kind, so uh, already... Uh, on move 8, we have a new position on the board. Uh, so let's see how Alpha deals with this. Of course, you can capture here, but uh, Black will just recapture with the G-point. Black's plan is the castle queen side, and Black would have a really massive center here. He could use the semi-open G-file to already start, start some sort of an attack against the white king. Uh, Black would uh, have an excellent position here. Uh, so what Alpha decided to, to do after F6 uh, is to sacrifice the E pawn, the central pawn, by playing C3. C3, uh, you'll see why, uh, why C3. Uh, we have F captures on E5, Stockfish decides to capture the pawn. Uh, knight captures on E5, Knight captures on E5, D captures and Queen captures. So Stockfish grabs the pawn, uh, but uh, the, C, the, the pawn being on C3 now does not make the B2 pawn a target. So here uh, Alpha is uh, free to, to make a move without uh, worrying about the B2 pawn. But it, it's not like Alpha worries about pawns. Uh, rook to E1. Uh, challenging the queen's position on e5, and here the queen retreats to, c, uh, to c7. Uh, better now than uh, after one of the bishop moves. And here, uh, bishop to h5 with check. So uh, alpha sacrificed a pawn, now uh, he has to make uh, make it count. So uh, how will alpha uh, gain any, any sort of... Um, uh, <laughs> what's the word? any sort of uh, compensation for this uh, sacrificed pawn. Uh, here, okay, this comes with check. You could block it with the g6. Uh, that's uh, something you don't want to do, as you already have a light square bishop here that will pretty much make your entire pawn structure uh, look, uh, the bishop look like uh, part of the pawn structure. So here, knight to g6. If you try to block with bishop to g6, then you get bishop to g5. Of course, so white will not capture uh, and allow black this open h file. So here, bishop to g5, and after a queen to d7, now the d6 pawn is under attack. Queen to d7, after the pawn is defended, c4, already challenging the black center, and with the black king still being in the center, uh, white will simply gain too much uh, for this pawn. So after bishop to h5 check, we have knight to g6, and now comes g4. 
uh, attacking uh, black's light square bishop. We have bishop to d3, bishop to e4 is also possible, but then knight captures, pawn captures, and the, the white rook will make quick work uh, of the doubled uh, black e pawns. Uh, so, g4, bishop to d3, and now comes knight to b3, attacking uh, the, the bishop here. We have bishop to c4, and here uh, comes the move that, well, it's always hard to analyze alpha's games, but uh, here comes the move that uh, I really enjoy, and it's knight to d4. Here, uh, uh, you have to see that uh, black has all of his central pawns on light squares, and he also has a light square bishop. Uh, so if uh, the position reaches some sort of an endgame, then this bishop w will be uh, a bad bishop. And uh, Alpha Alpha doesn't want to allow this bishop to be traded for this knight. So knight to d4, this comes with an attack against the e6 pawn. We have e5 attacking Alpha's knight here, and now comes b3. And like we said, uh, Stockfish would very much enjoy if uh, he could uh, give up this light square bishop for this knight. Uh, but uh, f for the moment, it is uh, not possible because after pawn captures bishop to f4 check would win the queen the king is in check and black will will lose the queen here so after b3 we have bishop to a6 retreating with the bishop and now comes bishop to f4 an excellent move by alpha because here if black were to be allowed to push e4 and create this massive central pawn chain then black would uh, have an excellent position here with bishop to f4 alpha doesn't allow it and now uh, you cannot capture or push e4 uh, because, uh, well, you can't capture because uh, the, the king would be in check, but you can't push e4 because you would blunder your queen. So here uh, we have queenside castle. Now, of course, there is a threat of capturing either the bishop or the knight, but simply bishop to g3. Uh, you could go bishop captures on g6 immediately, remove the defender of d5 pawn and only then capture, but why give black the semi-open h file for attack? There's no point into it. And alpha did not sacrifice a pawn uh, to, re to grab back the pawn so quickly. So bishop to g3, still keeping the tension here, uh, and now comes rook to e8. Uh, we have a4 by alpha, uh, expanding on the queen side. We've already seen alpha do this uh, very often. Uh, mess up your pawn structure on the king side, push the pawns on the queen side as far as possible, and good things will happen. Uh, that's how that's how alpha does things. Uh, but okay, king to b8. Uh, Stockfish wants to bring the king all over to a8 uh, to improve the safety of the king. And now comes b4. Uh, at some point, b5 will be an idea, and that will uh, severely weaken the d5 pawn. Uh, first, bishop to d6, now not allowing this pin to exist, now e4 and capturing the knight will definitely be a possibility, but now knight to f5, putting pressure on the bishop here, but also attacking the g7 pawn. Uh, and here we have, uh, as b5 now definitely is a threat, bishop to c4. If you don't uh, play bishop to c4, let's say you do this, then like we said, b5 will be uh, a very nice threat. Pawn captures, queen captures on d5, and now there will be simply too many threats of pawn captures here, knight captures here, knight captures on g7, and queen picks up the bishop, so yeah, a lot of threats here. So after knight to f5, we have bishop to c4. Now b5 will not uh, come off as that strong of a move as the bishop is already protecting the d5 pawn. But now queen d2. Alpha now has different plans for the queen. Uh, king to a8, and now comes queen to g5. So a very nice uh, position for uh, for the white queen. Uh, you can't kick her away with h6. That will make uh, the knight uh, on g6 hang. After this knight moves, for example, knight captures, then the, the queen, the bishop, and the rook will uh, all be attacking the e5 pawn. And at some point when this knight is either captured or moved, then both the queen and the knight will be attacking the g7 pawn. So extreme pressure against black's position, uh, but black is still up a pawn. So let's see uh, how Stockfish deals with this. We have rook to e6, and now adding further protection to the d6 bishop, but also if the knight is captured, preparing rook captures on g6. So here we have it, knight captures on d6 by alpha, rook captures on d6, and now bishop captures on g6. Uh, you cannot capture here because queen captures on e5 would win you the game. Uh, you have to protect your rook, and after rook here, simply move the queen, and then uh, black is lost here. So after bishop captures on g6, we have rook captures on g6. Now the queen is under attack, and now comes queen captures on e5. Uh, queen, ca queen captures, bishop captures, white recaptures uh, the extra pawn black had, but now rook captures, uh, sorry, 
Uh, first, we have rook captures on e5, and now comes rook captures on g4. Uh, now, white did not allow this uh, capturing on g4 to come with check. So, uh, white did recapture back the pawn here, but the black now captured the g4 pawn, and black is still up a pawn. So, you might think, what is alpha doing here? Uh, Stockfish is still up a pawn, uh, and it's an opposite color bishop endgame. So, how is uh, alpha to proceed here? Uh, well, first, f3. Uh, kick back the rook, rook to g6, and now comes a5. And now when you look uh, look at this position, uh, like we said, this bishop isn't uh, all that great. It will be very hard for this bishop to gain any activity. Okay, it does uh, control this diagonal, but uh, that, that diagonal isn't very important for the game at the moment. Uh, Alpha's plan is to bring this rook over to a1 to gain complete control of the e file. But even with only one rook uh, on e5, well, uh, Alpha already has uh, complete control of the, of the only open file on the board, as it's very hard to imagine that black will be able to challenge uh, Alpha's dominance on the e-file. Uh, but okay, we have rook to f6 attacking the f3 pawn, but Alpha simply doubles up as it comes with huge tempo. Now, of course, you cannot capture uh, due to uh, back rank weaknesses. Of course, this would end in a checkmate. Uh, but then again, you can't prevent it by playing a6, making some room for your king, as you would still fall victim to rook to e8 check. Uh, rook captures king. Uh, rook captures, and after king to a7. Now, of course, you all see the forced checkmate sequence. Uh, bishop checks, king moves. Bishop checks, king moves, and now bishop to b7 will be checkmated. The rook is covering the entire uh, bank, back rank. So after rook a to e1, now alpha increases uh, his control of the e file, and the stockfish doesn't really have all that much to do. We have rook f to e8. Uh, trying to fix some back rank weaknesses, although there isn't much you can do here. And now king to f2. Alpha simply starts improving the position. Uh, we have g6. Uh, now comes rook to e7. At some point, uh, alpha is planning to push a6 here uh, when, the when the move will be possible. And then uh, black will either have to push b6 and uh, make a weakness out of the a7 pawn or capture here. And then uh, the bishop will be able to attack the a7 pawn and also the rook will be able to join in with the attack. So uh, alpha's plan is clear here. Uh, we have h5 trying to push h4 in, and here uh, h4 would be sort of an automatic, but alpha finds an even better idea. Bishop to e5, attacks the rook on h8, rook h to g8, and now comes bishop to g7. Uh, forcing this rook to move, we have rook to c8, and now you can see with this bishop on g7 and this rook on e7, uh, this rook has to stay here, all of the dark squares uh, are unavailable, uh, the rook is covering these squares, this square is covered, so uh, basically the only squares uh, the rooks are allowed to go to, they, they are already there. So black really has no useful moves here and the bishop is still there on a light square. And it, as it often is, uh, is in games with opposite colored bishops, when this bishop will be used to attack the a7 pawn, the light square bishop will be uh, powerless to help as it only controls the light squares. Uh, bishop to d4 now. At some point, like we said, a6 will be pushed, and then this will be a very powerful uh, attacking tool for alpha. Uh, we have bishop to b5, and now comes king to g3. Now alpha will use the dark squares to bring his king all uh, into uh, deep into the position. Uh, bishop back to d3. We have king to h4, and now comes bishop to f5. King to g5. This is unstoppable. Stockfish simply has to see, uh, wait and see what uh, will happen. And now comes rook c to d8. Bishop to g7 now. Uh, rook back to c8, and now comes rook to e2. Uh, we have rook, rook to d8, and now comes h4. Again, simply improving the position, waiting for, for black to make a move. Uh, rook back to c8, and now finally comes a6. Uh, you, could, uh, you could also try uh, and prevent this by playing something like bishop to d3, but then after uh, the rook attacks the bishop, uh, the bishop will have to decide whether it will keep an eye uh, on the g6 pawn or it will keep an eye on the a6 square, so the bishop will be overloaded. Uh, but okay, we have a6 here, and now comes b captures on a6. Like we said, if you push b6, uh, then you're going to make a weakness out of the a7 pawn. And here, the, the plan would be fairly simple. Rook to b7, threatening rook to e7 to double up uh, on the 7th rank. And of course, after black stops this, you will play captures, captures, and then go rook to c7. And then the c7 pawn, the c6 pawn will fall, and slowly but surely, uh, the entire black position will crumble. Uh, you 
could stop it with rook c8, but then the bishop has to leave the defense of the g6 pawn, and then these pawns will fall when you create two pass pawns on the king side, uh, the game is over. Uh, but okay, after a6, we have b captures on a6, but now, uh, like we said, the dark square bishop will be used to, uh, uh, to attack the a7 pawn. Uh, bishop to d4, we have king to b8, and now comes bishop captures on a7. Uh, we have king to a8, and now comes bishop back to c5. Uh, we have king back to b8. Uh, you don't want to uh, allow this king to stay on a8 as uh, rook to a7. If this comes with tempo, uh, the king will have to move and then this rook will uh, come to e7 for free and the black will be lost. So king to b8, we have rook to a2 going after the a6 pawn, but now bishop to d3. And okay, so far this bishop on d3 can keep an eye on the a6 pawn and on the g6 pawn, but at some point uh, white will attack both of these weak pawns and uh, you, black will not be able to, to defend everything. Uh, rook to d2 attacks the bishop, bishop to, uh, to b1 keeping an eye on the g6 pawn and now rook to d1 forcing the bishop back, bishop to c2 and now bishop to a7 check. King moves and now rook to e1. Uh, bishop moves back to d3 and now we have bishop to b6 and like we said if uh, black allows this to come with check then black will be lost after king to b8 rook e7 comes with tempo and now there is very little you can do you have to prevent checkmate rook cf8 and now after check king moves uh, bishop moves uh, you will go bishop to h2 to keep an eye uh, on this square and now there is no defense against rook to a7 checkmate you will have to uh, suffer severe material loss just to prolong the game pointlessly. Uh, but okay, bishop to b6, we have king to b8, not allowing rook e7 to come with check, bishop to d4, and now bishop to f5. Black is still holding on, but now f4. Again, alpha simply slowly but surely improves the position. Uh, rook c to d8, and now comes rook to a1. Again, uh, threatening the a6 pawn, bishop to d3 defending, and now rook to e3 attacking the bishop. Uh, we have bishop to b5 and now finally rook to e1. Uh, so you cannot go bishop to d3 now as the d3 square is defended by the rook. King to c7, black makes a move and now comes uh, king to h6. Uh, we have king to c8 and now comes rook to e6. Now the g6 pawn is under attack so if you defend it with bishop to d3 then the c6 pawn will fall. Uh, so you can do that. So here uh, Stockfish tries an active defense. We have bishop to a4. Uh, first bishop to c5. The g6 pawn will fall at some point so simply improving the position e even further. And here king to b7. Uh, if you try bishop to c2 to keep an eye on this uh, pawn again you lose the c6 pawn so there's a very little uh, point in doing that. So after bishop to c5 king to b7 trying to keep an eye on both pawns on the queen side, but now rook captures on g6. We have rook captures and king captures on g6. Now the material is equal, alpha managed to grab a pawn, but now as you can see the, uh, the f pawn is a pass pawn and it's an extremely fast pawn. Uh, so here if you try anything like maybe you want to defend this pawn, it's way too slow. Simply rook e7 check and after the king moves, king attacks rook, rook moves and now uh, the f pawn starts marching up the board and it's all over. So after king g6 we have d4, uh, Stockfish tries the, the final attempt with an active defense, uh, bishop captures and now comes bishop to c2 with check. King captures on h5 and now comes c5. Uh, these moves are now pretty much pointless, but it's, uh, you know, Stockfish wants to go down, uh, you know, uh, swinging. Bishop captures on c5 and now king to c8. We have rook to e5, now alpha is uh, up three pawns. Uh, rook to h8, check. We have king to g4, bishop to d1, check. King to g3, uh, rook to h7, and now bishop to d4. King to d7. Uh, we have f5, now alpha finally starts pushing the f pawn, rook to g7, and after king to f2, uh, on move 71, it was in this position that Stockfish resigned the game. Uh, or, to be more precise, uh, Stockfish didn't resign, Stockfish just didn't make any more moves, uh, rather it took him too long to make a move, so it's considered that uh, Stockfish resigned. Uh, but yeah, even though uh, it's a really, really fun game, uh, I really like uh, ev everything about this game. Uh, first, how Alpha sacrifices a pawn already on move 8, then how uh, Alpha moves the knight to d4, doesn't allow the, the light square bishop to be traded for the knight, and then this light, light square is really just a liability for the rest of the game, and uh, uh, how Alpha uses the dark squares to march up the board with the king, it's, it's very impressive.
So yeah, uh, especially you know if you face uh, if you play the Karo Khan and if you often have to play the advanced variation of the Karo Khan, uh, maybe some of these ideas you can also use in your own games. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Plenty more games uh, between Alpha Zero and Stockfish while we're waiting for my Capablanca books to arrive. Uh, so really do hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I would like to thank Charles Baker, Matthew Yetman, uh, Chris Picard, KS Dylan, and Dame Plitvaric for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, hopefully with some more interesting content. Uh, and yeah, if 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 you, any of you are interested, definitely do check out uh, the new merchandise. It's uh, quite fun. Uh, I'm an excellent subscriber and just here to enjoy the show. So uh, that's that. Thank you all, and I will see you soon.